Zimbabwe's investment promotion strategy outlines the various road trips both abroad and at home that allows for a one-stop shop for investors. Key investment areas are ICT, FMCG markets and also agriculture and agro-processing. CNBC's Panache Chigomadze caught up with Zimbabwe's economic planning and investment promotion minister, that's Tapiwa Mashakada, for more. Here's that engagement. First of all, I must say Zimbabwe is open for business. Since we're open for business, we are doing a lot of roadshows mm -hmm. to showcase the investment potential, investment opportunities that are available in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And this uh, roadshow is one of many roadshows that we undertake to promote Zimbabwe as a safe and viable investment destination. We've done other roadshows in the UK, uh, roadshows in Australia and uh, in the BRIC countries. So we continue to up the game in terms of uh, projecting Zimbabwe as a good recipient of FDI. You know, there's a lot of competition uh, to receive FDI. Uh, Mozambique is doing well, Angola, uh, South Africa here, they are doing well, so we have to compete for FDI. So our, our, our role is to brand Zimbabwe as an attractive uh, investment destination with better returns mm -hmm. uh, because of the use of the multiple currency, mm -hmm. because of uh, its highly skilled uh, labor force, mm -hmm. and also because of the availability of uh, potential uh, sectors that are able to attract and absorb uh, FDI. Aside from moving from more of a branding or marketing sort of perspective, what are the issues or what are you doing um, in terms of policy to make sure that these investments are viable? The first thing is to make sure that uh, we guarantee uh, protection of investors, mm -hmm. their investments and assets. Mm -hmm. So we have said we are not going to nationalize or expropriate mm -hmm. private assets. Okay. Uh, we've made sure that our courts can adjudicate mm -hmm. on any investment disputes, okay. uh, even locally and even beyond. We are mm -hmm. member of the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, mm -hmm. which is the World Bank institution, mm -hmm. and we've signed other protocols that have to do with the protection of investors. Mm -hmm. And even our own constitution uh, places uh, the centrality of protecting investors. Mm -hmm. So that, that there we are done in terms of uh, protection of investors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also reformed our Inve Zimbabwe Investment Act mm -hmm. to make sure that it is in sync with indigenization, to make sure that we exempt mm -hmm. other sectors uh, that require FDI from the requirements what of these sectors? Of mm -hmm. indigenous, like the infrastructural sectors, okay. infrastructure, finance and banking, um, housing, uh, real, real estate sector, uh, transport and so on. The, these are thirsty uh, of FDI. So we, we have to exempt the requirements for them from the requirements. So of, that's complete exemption. Yeah, that's complete exemption because they are strategic in nature. Mm -hmm. They need huge capital. And we have also carried other reforms like the introduction of a one-stop shop mm -hmm. investment center mm -hmm. where we have created one gateway for investors to come and do business in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And the one-stop shop center in Zimbabwe is, is a unique mm -hmm. in Africa because it is there to facilitate the issuance of permits and licenses to investors mm -hmm. and also offer aftercare services mm -hmm. to investors. And we've put together so many departments under one roof, uh, immigration department, mm -hmm. common registry, mm -hmm. tax department, and all other relevant departments to make sure that the investor does not have to go from pillar to post. Mm -hmm. They just have one door to knock. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are some of the reforms uh, that we are making to make sure that Zimbabwe is attractive to investors. Mm -hmm. So just in terms of those um, th those flagship projects that you will be showcasing today, what are those? Can you please outline that for our investors? Well, today we have the menu mm -hmm. uh, for investors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, opportunities in the fast consumer moving industries, mm -hmm. ICT, retail and banking sector, mm -hmm. telecoms, mobile and so on. We are showcasing that. We are also showcasing agriculture and agro-processing. In agriculture we are showcasing contract farming, mm -hmm. where investors should come, um, do contract farming in partnership with locals, mm -hmm. especially in tobacco, cotton, and other cash crops. Mm -hmm. Then we have agro-processing, you know, we need to value add uh, all our primary commodities. So there's an opportunity in agro-processing, uh, be it in beef, uh, be it in fruit canning, uh, be it in textiles, so we are putting up a case for investment in agro-processing and value addition. We are also putting up a case in mining. Uh, mining being two-pronged, the extractive uh, aspect of mining uh, that is digging from the ground, and then of course beneficiation 
and value addition and creating supply chains in the economy. We are also putting up a case for infrastructural development, roads, railways, uh, transport sector, and so on and so forth, uh, the real estate sector um, as a fast-moving sector. We are also putting up a case for tourism. We are also putting up a case for manufacturing. You know, Zimbabwe used to be a hub for manufacturing. So we are trying to sustain it. What we need is an injection of fresh capital. So we are putting also a case on that. So clearly what we're saying is that we're going just not from a minerals resource um, or primary uh, sector focused economy. We want to make sure that this is a diversified economy that's what we're saying. That's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the theme of the conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my last question is just that we've seen that even within Zimbabwe and outside of Zimbabwe, the biggest concern for investors is uncertainty. The market is quite volatile, can be quite volatile in Zimbabwe. What are you doing as the Ministry of Economic Planning and Investment Promotion to make sure we mitigate that? Yeah, as uncertainty is something that we are trying to smoothen. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest uh, development to address that issue is what is happening on the political front, the, the constitutional referendum has given hope, has rekindled hope in Zimbabwe, that here we've got Zimbabweans who are prepared to move their country forward. We've got a new constitution that is pro-business. We've got a new constitution that uh, uh, protects private property and asset, private assets. So that inspires confidence. And also, we're looking forward to holding free and fair elections to inspire confidence. But most importantly, we have, we've been putting across consistency in message. If you, if you looked at all the teams that you have talked to, there's one message about Zimbabwe. We are open for business. We are protecting your investments. So it's reassuring. But of course, uh, it takes a little bit more time for investors to regain their confidence. But I think these kinds of engagements will re, you know, engineer our investment drive and foster confidence among investors.